Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I wanted to know how you want to because you will if you will do it in three languages. I mean, we can't do all three. If we only have 45 minutes for the session, we can't have one person talk three times in a row. We don't have a ton of time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly we have very little time. So I uh, just have to pick whatever language I want to prioritize for that person. We can go outside afterwards and do more. I mean, yeah, you uh, can do it for like while the Pakistan thing is running. I can just take the camera and we can go out and do it and grant the same here and make sure the Pakistan thing is okay. And but yeah, if we only have like 30 gigabyte minutes, you know, it's not safe. Um, A couple of people then. Okay. I hope that's what it looks like. Eternal folks plus Yvonne. Uh, I mentioned it to a few people, but I don't know if anyone uh, misconfirmed. One of them I thought was Pakistan, but then that plan obviously changed. So, um, no. Um, okay. Well, we can get started for our. Participants and online participants. Um, yeah. All right. How am I doing? Sound great? Sound good? Away from the mouth? I guess. Too much breath noise? All right, very good. Yeah, it's uh, I can't hear myself through the mic so well. Okay, so um, we are about to get started with a session on DHS2 Impact Stories. Uh, we have some people joining us online, which is great. And uh, we have one lovely participant here in Oslo and hopefully others coming. Um, so the idea for this session is to talk about um, how to craft, share um, stories about the impact of DHS2. Uh, so we're both going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about what is impact in DHS2 context. And then we're also going to hopefully get some live stories from people who are here today. So people who want to be interviewed and uh, have their presentations recorded, we can then uh, go through the process of talking about DHS2 impact live. Um, so I've also have got Alice with me, who's going to do some uh, assistance in French. Uh, especially for interviewing, and uh, then we will see what we get. So to get started, um, I guess the main question is why why is it important to show the impact of DHS2? So we have a few ideas here, um, different audiences who might care about the impact of DHS2. Um, so especially in our case for HISP UIO, the HISP Center, uh, we do a lot of dialogue with donors um, and donors increasingly want to see the real world effect of their investment in DHS2, not just the activities that have been carried out and the systems that have been implemented, the training that's been done, but what that has resulted in. So if the goal is to strengthen the health system in a given country, how do we show evidence that that has actually happened through these activities? Uh, that's a key goal of uh, creating a sort of impact story about that uh, activity there. Um, similarly, for people in the Ministry of Health or other program managers or project managers, um, their decision to use or continue using DHS2 is frequently based on the idea of whether or not it is a effective, <clears throat> successful platform. And so the more you can show that it is achieving its goals, the more likely those people are to continue to choose or choose DHS2 as, a, as an option. Uh, a different perspective is for the implementer, implementer community. Um, we talk a lot about sharing and best practices, but how do you know what a best practice is? Uh, part of that is showing what the outcome of an implementation has been. 
so that people can see it, see what it achieved, and then decide if it is something they also would like to um, borrow from or learn from based on whether or not it was able to achieve its goals. And finally, there's, there's a research component. And this is a fairly cyclical. Um, it's not just about uh, informing researchers of what might be worth researching, but also looking at research to then determine where impact has been. We see a lot of impact using, or a lot of research using DHS2 data that might come out a year or two after the fact. And that can tell us whether or not a certain program actually was effective uh, based on the analysis of, for example, programmatic outputs um, that DHS2 contributed to. So um, here we have a few examples. What do you mean by impact? Uh, these are just some general categories. Data completeness quality. I put a lot of quotes in here that you can see as like sample ideas, ways you could frame this in a text. Uh, obviously, this is very generic, um, but you can see we're talking about a variety of things. It's not just uh, reporting. It's also things like efficiency improvements, reducing workload, decision making, programmatic outcomes. These are all different categories of things you could potentially measure or potentially identify through a process of evaluating how a DHS2 implementation worked, did it achieve its goals. Um, here, I've kind of simplified it down to the bottom. You have to say what happened, what was done with DHS2 or through your work, how DHS2 helped achieve that. And finally, and most importantly, why that is important. It's not enough to just say that something happened. You have to translate that into a meaningful achievement for people so they understand what it was. So one question you can always ask yourself when you're trying to frame an impact story is, so what? So if you say, okay, we trained 100 people to use this uh, reporting form. Okay, so what? What did that help them do? How did that improve the efficiency of the project? Or, you know, say completeness improved by X percent. Why is that important? What does that help people do with the data that's being reported? You know, you have to take that extra step to go from what was achieved into what it means. And that translation into meaning is what's most important for the audience, especially for a non-technical audience. They have to have you tell them what the significance of what was done is. Okay, and then just some notes on ways to potentially document DHS2 impact. Um, some of these are internal, some of these are external. I think that um, if you're looking to create something uh, from the start, you've got to really start documenting your process from the beginning and think about what you wanna capture um, from the start. So getting good notes, what are the goals? What are the activities you're doing? What are the outcomes of those activities? That's crucial because that, that material will help you then create something later on. Um, formal reports, that's usually a part of the project. You have to report out to the funder on what you did. Um, we encourage people to make COP posts, community of practice, to share stories. Um, we use that frequently as source material for writing impact stories that go onto the dhs2.org website. So um, if you're active on the COP and if you share your information in the COP, that's a great way for us to find it and then help you get more visibility for your project in the larger community. Uh, impact stories are a lot of what we produce. Those go on the DHS2 website uh, in a category. And um, we try to go for a fairly broad diversity of projects, regions, um, uh, subject areas. And then we have a few others here. Um, obviously, we do encourage people to also promote their work in other media, including outside of the GHS2 community per se. So external blog posts, uh, presenting at different conferences, um, hosting webinars, joining webinars. And these are all ways you can reach audiences and also help to uh, increase the visibility of your work and DHS2 as a platform. So uh, let's see what we have next. Okay, so this is just a quick summary of, from our perspective, how you can go about creating a good impact story. And by good, I mean something that is detailed, um, meaningful, and concise, and gets the point across. Um, so impact stories, it says here, this is our primary channel for communicating the importance of DHS2. Uh, we do share these on our website, and we do also promote them with our donor audience, with uh, other international audiences. And we do have a fairly large readership. We have about 14,000 people on our mailing list. Uh, we highlight our new impact stories on our newsletter every month. And some of those get picked up by other organizations like UNICEF, uh, international health organizations that then will frequently invite the people who are behind those impact stories to join things like webinars, to share those stories further. So it's a good way to also get involved in these international 
uh, communities and international conversations by having your work uh, publicly visible and available. So um, we are very open to stories from the community, from the HIST groups, from ministries of health, from other organizations using DHS too. Um, if you're share, willing to share the material with us, we can help shape it into a story for the audience. So some steps, um, like I said in the last slide, mapping out your goals before you start the project so you know what you're trying to accomplish and maybe how to write about it when you get to the end. Uh, documenting your work, keeping track of details, taking photos, getting screenshots, um, all this material makes the story more interesting if you have uh, visual resources that you can add to it when you're done. Um, especially if you're approaching this from a technical perspective, making sure you have a good link to the program team that you're working with so you understand what their goals are for the project and then you know how you can measure if they've achieved them or not and what a meaningful measurement of success would be. Uh, finally, once you've got through all these steps, which are kind of the preparatory steps, um, writing a COP post, as I mentioned, is a good way to document your work publicly uh, and including a lot of these details. And then we would work with you on the last step, which is uh, shaping that into a more public story for a general audience, for a non-technical audience. Okay, so then we just have a screenshot of our website, some of the more recent impact stories there. And uh, we are gonna go into some Hopefully live interviews today. We have a few people here who can potentially tell us about their DHS2 work. But first, any questions on the presentation so far? Any thoughts, any uh, ideas? No. Okay, so then I think we are going to do uh, one or two interviews maybe. Um, so going to start with the first interview, uh, we are very happy and very pleased to welcome our first guest, which is, who is Rudy Tarnida, uh, Deputy Director for Study and Programmation at the Ministry of Health of IT. IT sorry. So uh, we will do this first interview. Yeah, Grant, maybe if you want to help to put the microphone on Rudy, it would be great. Thank you so much. So, Rudy, how are we going to proceed? You're going to put this microphone and you're going to, yes, you will going to come over because you are the star for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are so pleased to have Haiti among our participants. So, as I was saying, Rudy is the Deputy Director for the Department in Charge of Studies and Programmation at the Ministry of Health in Haiti. So, hi, Rudy. Hi. Yes. Yeah. So this is going to be a short but very impactful interview, if I can say. So I'm going to ask you two key questions. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do this interview in, uh, in English first, and probably later on during the day, we'll do another one in French and in Spanish. So basically, are you are we ready, Grant? Yes, we are. So. My first question will be very simple. It, what does DHS2 mean to you? I uh, mean, for me. For how you yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think that uh, DHS3 means for all students uh, good governance. So I will explain after explain. So if you can control your, the information of the country, you can control the system. So with DHS2, we have indicators that help us to access a program that is derivation. And then I will make resume the entry on three keywords collaboration and integrity. So collaboration, um, integration first, that that help us to they have one point to them before we do that again. So you have to begin we begin here. But an yeah. yeah. important point, important point. Well, then. Um, so uh, the most important thing to make sure we have everything we need on tape is to start by saying what your name is and where you are, and oh, then go to your answer just in one smooth statement. Well, she introduced me. Yeah, yeah, because for getting a camera, you need to say it. So, you, uh, you know, uh, so who you are, where you work, and what the issue means to you. Yeah. My name is Tommy Oumi. I'm working for the unit, uh, the studies and planning unit of the Minister of Health of Aid. So the first question is what DHS2 means. 
and I insert it's uh, that mean for OCD uh, good governance. And if you can control the information of, of, of the country, you can control the all the systems. So with the IGS2, um, we have it was available to make assessment of the program and the message. And that help that that help, that help us to, to 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 see the performance of the health system and to assess uh health intervention. So I will resume the 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 the, the meaning of the DHS2 in three keywords: collab integration, collaboration, and coordination. Integration. So with DHS2, we 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 we, make, uh, we have another overview of of technology in Haiti. So and then. We 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 can um build uh, we can develop for the database and make integration be an interoperability uh, uh, between two or three databases coordination so um um that helps us to coordinate more information inside the ministry before every program comes with with his own database right now the first question is. Um, the first question is um, if I can use DHS2 to, to make this. So, how we can process individual data or aggregate data? Yeah, and it's like if the answer is the answer or F is yes. So, if it's no, uh, the, the, the first question uh, it's possibly the, to make interoperability between this new database and DHS2 because DHS2 is the only repository uh, of the, the data world that we use to, to share our data in the Thank you so much. And okay. then the final one uh -huh. is what is the impact of DHS2 uh, concretely? Okay, the impact of the, the, the DHS2 is uh, it's, uh, change of behavior inside of the MISI, out of the MISI. Because all the donors we uh, are using the DHS2. So, and then for each program in Haiti, so they, they come. To see right now, uh, the, 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 the tendency is um, we are not going to develop other databases. So we have the HS2, we make promotion about the HS2 every, every, every one inside of the MISI and outside of the MISI. When I'm talking about outside of the MISI, I'm talking about partners, donors, and other sectors. So come and, and when you, when you, when we discuss about new database, new indicators, we, the first question is which platform that we will use to make it. So we have the HS2, and then we can use the HS2 to make the, the coordination between all the programs inside the ministry and then in outside the ministry. So it's the reason why, why, why I'm talking about the um, change of behavior in, in, in Haiti with the impact, with the first impact that we have with, with the HS2. Even though we still make advocacy to use data for decision making. It's a challenge. So, so, um, so you have enough time. Um, ten years of five years, sorry, to promote the the use of the ashes to Thank you so much for you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, for everyone who's just joining us, thank you. Um, we had a short presentation on. Uh, explaining the impact of EHS2, um, which if you missed it uh, live, you can watch the recording later. We've recorded this on Zoom. And now we are doing short interviews for people who want to share a DHS2 story, which we're gonna record. Um, so if we have a, any other volunteers who would like to talk to us about what DHS2 means to you or the impact of DHS2 has been in your project, uh, we'd really like love it if someone would come up and, uh, and talk to us about that. Anyone have something they wanna share? All right, I'm just going to put this microphone on you. Our project, yeah, yeah, yep. and Grant will tell you where to stand. So you look great on camera. 
And uh, Alice, we can just stand over here so we're not blocking the, we just over here is good. That way she can look at us and they can see her. For those of you who are interested in conducting interviews yourselves someday, this is a common interview technique where you don't have the person stare directly at the camera, you have them stare off to the side to a, an interviewer who is carrying out the interview, just a typical documentary style filming. So insider tips. Uh, Yep, so if you could start by um, saying your name, uh, where you work, and what does DHS2 mean to you? challenge uh, for now because Nepal has turned to uh, it, it has transitioned into the federal structure with that structure in place uh, uh, we are also having a change in the communications like there are barriers which is being um, uh, you know like uh, uh, is is absorbed for now so DHS is actually breaking that barrier in terms of uh, coordinating different sector of government because with one click uh, we get to see all the data and where the barriers are. So it has actually work uh, as a bridging uh, component uh, in terms of the federal structure. So it's, it's making a larger impact in terms of our country uh, uh, to uh, coordinate uh, all the ministerial uh, governments, uh, especially who are related to health and the decision maker and uh, as well as the end user. Uh, it's making a big impact. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there any okay? Is there anything else you wanted to share, or is that that's good? Okay, good. Yeah, thanks so much. Any other people who would like to talk about their work with the HSU? Yes. Do you want to? Do you have slides that you're planning to present today? Okay. Well, yes. I think we're scheduled to you for eleven fifteen. So we'll get through a few more short stories first, then you can have the stage. Yeah. Uh, Okay, let me put this on your computer. Yes. Okay, you can hold this. Ask him to look this way. Okay. Ask him to look this way. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Il offre la possibilité de prendre en compte les données de tous les programmes à différents niveaux du système, c'est-à-dire du niveau central jusqu'au niveau final. Merci. L'impact du DHS est concrètement au Mali, au niveau national. Par rapport au DHS, je veux dire tout d'abord, s'il n'y avait pas de DHS, il fallait le faire. Le DHS a donné un déclic au niveau du système de santé par rapport à la gestion de ces formats. À travers le DHS, vraiment l'effort qui sont en train de fournir par les acteurs du système de formation sanitaire. Le travail du matin et du soir, et qui était difficile à rendre disponible les informations. Avec, à travers les DHS, avec un clic ou un clac, on arrive à donner l'information à temps et réel, et en même temps, on arrive à communiquer avec les différents systèmes qui sont là, parce que dans l'état, ça a facilité la communication interne entre les différents programmes, ça a facilité la communication entre les militaires et ses partenaires, ça permet aussi de faciliter la communication, les échanges de l'évaluation au niveau de la tour de gare, voire même au niveau de la On a adhéré et que les, tous les pays sont en train de faire les mêmes choses en même temps pour faire échanger et facilement les données entre pays et entre en tout cas, par rapport à l'impact. Aussi, ce plan individuel, ça a donné de la valeur aux acteurs du système d'information sanitaire. Les gens travaillent beaucoup pour faire des résultats. Actuellement, les, 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 les sites qui sont en charge voient les fruits de leur travail. Et ils sont très fiers de faire savoir que c'est à travers et que des millions sont prises à différents niveaux du système pour pouvoir améliorer l'état de santé de nos populations. Ça vraiment l'impact que nous avons senti par ça n'existe pas, il faut l'aimer. Merci. Merci beaucoup de parler. Merci. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll read those. Uh, is there anyone else interested in uh, coming up and sharing a story with us? Please. Out oh, to the Santif. You can hold this. Um, yes, English would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's let's do English again. All right. My name is Sophie. Okay. I'm uh, the director of programs for Case West and Central. We're based in Togo with offices in Cote d'Ivoire and Mali. Basically, for us, DHS2 is a powerful tool uh, to communicate on achievements, first of all, because it makes uh, the achievement from the field things visible to everybody. And then second thing is a tool to improve in performance, because once you're seeing what you're doing, the result, you can tackle some gaps and make some improvement. So that's what uh, DHS2 means for us. Okay. Since you're representing several countries, you work with several countries, can you maybe just give some examples of a concrete impact you've seen DHS2 or DHS2 data make in one or one or more countries? Yeah. Let me start by Togo, where uh, country, uh, in 2012, we conducted uh, an assessment of the HMIS, and we have seen the same thing that we've seen everywhere. So 
no, no, no cleanliness, it was nothing. Uh, we don't have, uh, we can uh, have historical data. And uh, so we had some, some challenges to tackle regarding the DHIS2, regarding the HMIS. So uh, the country designed a strategy, but in the strategy, nobody knows what tool we should use to change this, the system. So uh, the game changer was in 2014 when we had an agreement with the UIO on DHIS2. And actually, we piloted it in 2013 to 2015, and then we scaled it up all over the time until 2018. And then by the end of 2018, we were able to produce one uh, uh, yearbook, annual yearbook, which uh, the health yearbook, which has not been produced for 10 years before. So it changes the, 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 the game and it changes the way everybody sees the, the work of the health sector and especially the public health sector. That's what is uh, uh, about Togo. For example, recently in DRC, uh, and uh, in Mali as well, we were able during the COVID-19 uh, crisis to use the chance to, to have a, a case management system, including vaccination and lab results that we were able to produce a certificate. And for the case of Togo, that certificate was been, has been accepted and accredited by the uh, African Union and also by the European Union. So those are the things we have been able to achieve with the HIT. I think that in the coming year we will be doing. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. I'll take this microphone too. All right. And I think we have another. Uh, do you want to? Oh, Umu, would you like to come up and join us? We're interviewing people. You arrived just in time. Uh -huh. No.
Donc, arrivé au Sénégal, bon, je me suis dit, donc, euh, il faut que j'amène ces gens-là ici. En décembre, j'ai fait ici une lettre à, à l'OWP pour éviter de mettre ce dossier. C'est comme ça que nous avons commencé le DHC au Sénégal. Depuis là, depuis 2012, on ne peut on ne fait que des Et ça, ça nous a permis d'avancer sur beaucoup de choses. Application qui est très forte, qui est facile à manipuler, les utilisateurs au niveau du Sénégal. Puisque on a la possibilité de saisir à centraliser. Donc, ça nous permet de régler pas mal de problèmes par rapport non seulement à l'assistance des utilisateurs, puisque avant, on tenait à assister les, les utilisateurs. Hein. Imaginez-vous, quand on utilise du Excel, et que quelqu'un nous appelle, donc on doit prendre en charge cette personne-là. Vous imaginez ce que ça fait. Donc, euh, c'est une application très euh, donc facile à, 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 à expliquer quand tu formes les utilisateurs. Donc, c'est... Euh, ça, j'ai un petit moment du pied de demander l'impact du DHC dans trois mots, par exemple. Oui, oui. Bon, si je vais dire l'impact du DHC au Sénégal, bon, je dirais le fait d'avoir les données disponibles déjà, ça, c'est un, la disponibilité des données. J'ai ajouté à temps réel, puisque avant, on ne pouvait pas, quand on devait faire euh, une annuelle statistique, c'était la loi de l'avenir. Il fallait regrouper les gens dans les ateliers, n'est-ce pas? Là, c'est centralisé, nous avons les données. Tout le monde s'est dit à temps réel. Ça, c'est vraiment le premier impact que je veux dire. Euh, il y a aussi euh, euh, la qualité des données. Beaucoup à nous donner. Nous avons la possibilité de mettre des règles de validation qui peuvent à cohérence de le suivre au niveau opérationnel. Et ça, ça joue beaucoup sur la qualité. Je ne veux pas dire que nous avons atteint le, le, le seul mais par rapport à la, à la qualité. C'est une œuvre qui se fait tous les jours de façon progressive. On s'en vers le même Mais quand même, on peut, si on se compare à 2012, 2015, et ainsi de suite, avant 2012, ça a beaucoup avancé. Et euh, le fait qu'on ait centralisé aussi, euh, que tout le monde accepte à un seul. Euh, et unifié et intégré, je l'ai dit quand je faisais la présentation, ça a réglé la fragmentation du système. La fragmentation du système, du système euh, juste sur la qualité des données. Ça, ça règle beaucoup de choses. On dit en deux mots, trois mots, hein. sinon je peux dire beaucoup de choses. Merci beaucoup. Merci. 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 Let me see. All right, I think we have time for one more short story if anyone else wants to share. Any other DHS2 stories? Arthur, do you want to say anything while you're here? I know you've got a lot of stories. We do. I think we've, we've gotten enough. Mm. Okay, we've gotten a number of good stories today. So um, if we don't have any more volunteers, just wrap up with a couple of closing uh, comments. Yeah, we um, yeah. So we actually have to end this session pretty soon because Pakistan is going to then take over and do a presentation on their uh, work. But we can take the camera out into the hallway and do some more filming there. Um, okay. So a couple notes. If you're interested in also sharing your stories, I think listening to the way people talk about their DHS two implementations, what's important to them, um, is a good way to go about it. And if you're ask, if you're trying to shape a story, um, talking to people who are using the data, using the system, what the data mean to them, what the system's impact means to them, is a good way to get to the heart of that story. Then you see what's important to the people whose, whose work actually depends on using it. Um, interviews are a great way to get that information if you're writing about a system, um, because people love facts, but what they love even more is a good quote, a good story. And so if you get that story from a person who actually is really invested in the system, that can be the, the headline for your article. That can be the thing that draws people in and then helps them be interested in reading all the facts and all the, the supporting details. So really a lot of this is about the sort of personal 
connection to the system because this is a system a lot of people use day to day they use to to do their job and people who want to do a good job generally speaking so if we can make that connection to how dhs2 facilitates that work facilitates achieving goals then we can really translate that into a, a story that's meaningful for people and wants them to continue to engage in the DS, dhs2 project um so thanks everyone for joining. I hope that was interesting. A little bit non-traditional as a presentation, but I really appreciate everyone who came and who shared their stories with us. And uh, we're gonna wrap up. Uh, we will put this recording on uh, YouTube for anyone who wants to watch it after the fact, especially if you missed the beginning part of the presentation where we talked a little bit more about uh, how to shape DHS2 stories and, and who might be interested in them. And uh, then we're gonna transition on to the next presentation, which will be from the Ministry of Health in Pakistan about their work. Okay, thanks for joining. Have a now? Okay. Um, I would maybe stop recording and start it again so you get a clean uh, break.